Aloha, I'm Malia Zimmerman, and this is News Behind the News. Today we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to turn the show over to Juliet, who has been here in Hawaii working as a journalist. She's French, and she's actually going to be going back to France. But before she goes, we want to do a show on journalism, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Juliet. Thank you so much for inviting me. So I study journalism in France, and it is very interesting for me to see how journalists were here. So today is a very good opportunity for me to ask Malia and Jim about their work and uh, especially about investigative journalism. So I know you both are very well-known journalists here, but can you uh, tell me more about your background? What did you uh, do before working for Hawaii Reporter? And maybe Malia, you can tell me uh, why did you decide to create your own newspaper? Sure. Jim, you want to go first? Well, um, I, was, uh, I was born in Colorado, raised in California. I, did, I, I, I don't have a degree in journalism, but I worked at the, at the newspaper at, at the University of California, Davis. <clears throat> and my first job, really, in journalism was, was in Hawaii. I worked for United Press International Wire Service uh, in, in Hawaii, uh, only for about a year. And then I got a, a job at the, at the advertiser, the morning newspaper at the time and worked there for uh, until it was about 1975 until 1996 when I went into television. Um, it worked at uh, KITV uh, for an, until about 2002, then went back to the, to the advertiser. <coughs> and then when the advertiser went out of business, <coughs> I went to work for, uh, for Malia. So I've been in, in wire reporter, newspaper reporter, uh, a TV reporter and an online reporter. So I've, I've kind of covered all, 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 those, all the bases. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what about you, Maria? So I used to work at uh, ho uh, a local TV station called KHON. That was um, in the beginning. And um, then also worked at Pacific Business News, which was a business newspaper. I did a lot of freelancing for various publications in Hawaii and also in the mainland and um, worked with, um, as a consultant to some of the big stations here, or big uh, TV like Fox News, and worked with um, doing interviews on um, even Al Jazeera. We worked with Al Jazeera as well, um, giving them uh, photographs and video from some of the investigations we've done. And in 2000, I wanted to start uh, an online newspaper that could actually do, was free to do investigations, because it felt like a lot of times in Hawaii, the media has, um, you know, it's kind of, in a sense, controlled by advertisers, maybe big advertisers or big mm -hmm. powerful uh, forces like big government officials and so on that can threaten either pulling funding or uh, pulling access from a reporter if they um, ask too many questions or do too much investigation. So for Jim, he's always mm -hmm. been uh, very good at digging up um, stories all his through his career and doesn't seem to have ever been touched by that. But I know in my, in my work, where I worked at Pacific Business News, that was certainly an issue. And mm -hmm. so I, was, I wanted to do something where um, we had the freedom to do the kinds of investigations that we could do. And the internet provided that because uh, when we started up, there was really no one else doing any kind of internet news. And uh, in fact, people said, what a dumb idea that is. Who's going to read news on the internet? But um, it, it, you know, as we know that uh, over time that a lot more newspapers have been going online or going online and in, in print as well. And the media, in, the way we work now, we have a television show, we have radio mm -hmm. reports every morning, we have internet. So we work with, and we work with a lot of other media as well in Hawaii. So it's, it's kind of a multimedia approach rather just, than just online. Okay. So Jim, you have uh, been working as a reporter for more than 30 years. Um, did you see any evolution in this profession? Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's changed a lot, although <clears throat> as I alluded to earlier, when I first started in the business, I was working for United Press International, which is a wire service, which basically uh, provided news to other news outlets, uh, to, to radio stations and to, and to newspapers. And <clears throat> Getting, getting the story first and getting it out first was, was extremely important. There was an emphasis and a premium on, on, on timely reporting. <clears throat> so the, in, in a way, it, it's, it's all kind of evolved and come around for full circle because that's now that, that in online reporting, that's, that's, that's what you do. It's, you know, it's, it's getting the story first and getting it out there mm -hmm. as immediately as possible. So that, that, 
so those, those, they really hasn't changed that much uh, in, in that respect. Um, although certainly, it's there's been lots of other changes. There's lots more, you know, emphasis on 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 video and on uh, uh, on uh, on on production values on, on online news news reporting. And it's it's uh, it's it's. I used to, you know, spend all my all my time, at, you know, in front of a typewriter and, you know, in in a, in a big newsroom with, uh, you know, clattering teletypes and, and all that. And and now it's 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 just me and my computer. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 an amazing change. <clears throat> Did you see any other changes over the years? Well, when I learned to edit on TV, it was a much different system. You know, we didn't have it wasn't really done on computers, and I'm sure even before that, it was done on on film. But um, yep, yeah, and then a lot of things were done on typewriters and uh, or laying out the paper mm -hmm. um, and actually pasting words down. Um, that was how it was when I first started. But um, now everything's electronic, and uh, it seems like it's a lot simpler as long as you can learn how to how to do that. Mm -hmm. What is the best definition you could give uh, for investigative uh, reporter? You know, I, <clears throat> I I don't think investigative reporting is really different from, from, from any other form of reporting except that uh, you, you, you generally have more time to, to research and, and to write stories. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a, the, the biggest difference. There are, there are sort of classical definitions and, you know, in, in award categories for, for, you know, covering subjects that, that other people aren't covering that are of significant community interest. And, and, and reporting that results in, in lasting or demonstrable social change for the better, that you, you know, you're responsible for finding something out and getting it fixed. That, that's, that's kind of the, 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 the working definition of, of, of investigative journalism, I think. I think um, for us, investigative journalism has just been looking into, like as Jim said, looking into issues other people might not do, look into or might not care about. For example, we've, we've looked into human trafficking, you know, sex labor, that labor trafficking, sex trafficking, um, all kinds of different crimes. Jim has uh, dug up, you know, background on maybe some people that got appointed to high positions in government that shouldn't have been appointed because they have a, a real uh, disturbing background that was never dug into by the people that appointed that, that person. So we do a lot of that kind of investigation that a lot of times the, the government officials or who's ever in charge should actually be doing. but. It ends up being um, the news media that does it and brings out these issues. So, mm -hmm. I sometimes hear the expression "watchdog journalism." What does it mean? I, th that's that, that that means that that, that you are <clears throat> literally the, the watchdog in, in society and in, on the alert for wrongdoing or or unfairness or inequity, and and you you, you bark at it and, and or or take a bite out of it and and, and chase it away and. <clears throat> that's that's kind of the, the, the a shorthand definition of, of investigative journalism. You're a watchdog, and you're on the on the alert for for wrongdoing or, or inequity. Government waste, fraud, abuse, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely part of being a watchdog journalist. Mm -hmm. You just won uh, eight awards from the Society of Professional Journalists, including top investigative uh, reporting prizes. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, I'm curious, what are the main issues that Hawaii is facing today and uh, which need to be covered and investigated? You want to you take a shot at that? Sure, okay. Go ahead. Well, I mentioned, um, I think one of the big issues that we've dug into is definitely this labor trafficking. We have a, a network of people that are coming from Southeast Asia, Southeast Asian countries, especially right now from Laos and Thailand. And in the case of the Laotians, they're brought here and um, in through illegal means and then placed on farms in bad situations. And they're exposed, exposed to chemicals, um, human traffickers. They're living in poor conditions. They have no way to get help because they don't speak English. And they're kind of put in a position where they're made to live in fear that if they reach out for help, or medical services or anything like that, that they'll be deported or they'll be imprisoned or they'll be fined. And so we have these people living on these farms and it's, um, there's health issues um, related to their own health. Uh, we have problems with them not learning how to spray pesticide and yet spraying pesticides, so there's a food safety issue. So to me, that, that's one story that I've really been passionate about and, and looked into. Um, we have a lot of other stories that, um, involving crimes that are being con committed. And because we're a tourism destination, we certainly have a big problem with, for example, prostitution. 
And I'll let Jim tell you about that, because we always make Jim investigate the prostitution since he's the guy. <laughs> well, we, we, can, we can come back to that. I yeah. mean, but yes. I, 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 you know, as, as the news business has changed here and around the world, but it, it, certainly here, the, the, the number of reporters, the number of news organizations has shrunk. And so, to my way of thinking, the, the sort of standard, you know, traditional areas of reporting uh, there are very there are a lot fewer reporters who are actually looking at them. So it's 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 important to me to to keep at that the sort of basic stuff. You know, government spending, mm -hmm. uh, criminal activity, organized crime. Uh, I, I think the military in in Hawaii is is a, is grossly undercovered. There's the amount of money in 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 that's being spent in, in resources that are devoted to, to the military in Hawaii is just is, is staggering. And there really is no one, what, maybe a half of a reporter, you know, in the whole state that's really paying any attention at all to, to the military. Health care is another subject. There's lots of changes coming in, in health care. Um, so that there's, there's all that kind of stuff. And, and Malia wants, to, wants me to talk about <clears throat> we, what, one of the, the, uh, the, the stories that, uh, that, that we did um, this year, actually, um, had to do with a, 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 a University of Hawaii professor um, who was uh, there's a, an escort service being operated out of his 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 personal home in Waikiki, <laughs> and we, we did some investigating uh, on that and in, involving undercover cameras and and uh, and that was uh, that that required me to to to, to pose as a as a uh, Purchaser of, of, of services of, of an escort uh, company, but so that's that's the kind of stuff that we that, that we're involved in and, and 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 hope to continue to be involved in. Another story we did with hidden cameras and it was involving gambling, illegal gambling. There's no form of gambling that's allowed in Hawaii. We're one of only uh, two states in the whole nation that don't allow any form of gambling. We don't have lotteries. We don't have bingo, that kind of thing. Um, we, we don't have casinos. So, uh, but there is still a lot of gambling going on under, you know, underneath in the, in the criminal world. And so, and, and so basically we, we did a hidden camera investigation of an illegal lottery that was going on throughout Chinatown and also throughout um, in this public housing not too far not too far from here and it was an interesting story because the two people who were called themselves queens of lottery were Lao Ocean also mm -hmm. and they were running um, this whole business from their home in government housing now government housing is supposed to be for people who don't have a high income but they were actually making potentially millions of dollars on this lottery, running it from public housing, but it's all cash business. So we were able to document how they were using, how they were running this operation and how they were using um, some of the vendors in Chinatown that may have looked like a vegetable stand, but it's really a lottery dealer as well. So it was a really uh, fun story to do and we got exclusive access to what was really happening. And then the FBI, IRS, and um, Homeland Security investigations, along with the Honolulu Police Department, followed our investigation, copied our investigation, did their own uh, look into it, and then went and raided these places. And because we had worked with them on the story, gave us access to the actual raids. Interesting stories. So can you tell me more how you usually work? Uh, where do you find the stories? And uh, you talked about uh, hidden cameras, but what are the tools do you use when you work? Can you tell me about, more about that? Well, <clears throat> a, a, a lot of the, the, the work that we do is, just, is pretty much self-generated. I mean, if, if it's something that's, that, that's a nice thing about you know, the, the, the work that, that, that I get to do now, is you know if it's if I'm interested in it, well then I can I can take a look at it, you know, and and, and, and if it's if there's a story there, then I can I can go after it. Um, it that's that's a that's a, a wonderful change from from working at at a much larger organization, editor driven. In um, so, so that that necessarily uh, is brings its own difficulties because there's you know there's so many stories out there that you know and, and there's so little time you know to mm -hmm. tell them all that it's a uh, there's, there's, uh, it, it's hard for me to manage my time uh, in, a, in a way that I maximize, you know, the, the, the uh, what I'm able to bring to, to each sub subject. But uh, most of it is is self-generated. Malia and I talk a lot about about different stories and, and, and exchange ideas and, and uh, 
<clears throat> and, uh, and and sort of figure out you know what what what, you, what what's a good idea to to work on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we basically, like Jim said, we we brainstorm. But Jim and I have certain places that we always look for stories, certain contract websites, or places <clears throat> that we can dig into news. Uh, we, get a, we get a lot of tips because we do investigative reporting and there's not too many places that do that. So people know they can come to one of us and, and give us an idea for a story and that we'll do our best to try to look into it. So we do get a lot of in input from the public. Mm -hmm. Your work is very demanding. What are the main challenges you are facing every day in your work? Well, I, I, the main challenge that I have, once again, is managing time. Mm -hmm. it, it's <clears throat> the, working for an online news outlet is it, it, there's, there's a kind of a constant need for, for, for information and stories and 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 I, I I come from a sort of slower paced background and I you know and I, I like to you know take my time and, and, and maybe not produce as much as, as as others others are doing so it's it I, I, it's difficult for me to find a balance between those two things I think you know I, I'm, I'm kind of getting there but that, once again that's the, that's the, the single Biggest challenge that I, I face is, is is finding enough time, you know, to, to do justice to the to the to the to the site in in, in, in providing it with new content content and to do justice to a longer term kind of investigative mm -hmm. reporting. So, do you mm -hmm. think online newspaper can help you to uh, manage your time? Because it, it's, it kind of forces me to. I mean, I just I I, I have to. <clears throat> mm -hmm. For me, I think definitely one of the most the biggest challenges besides what Jim said is um, learning new technologies and trying to find the best way for us to bring news in a more innovative way, in a more affordable way. Uh, we really want, we, you know, for example, the hidden camera investigations or going to press conferences and videotaping them and putting it on the internet so people can see what was said there directly from the person who's, who's bringing it. Um, trying to do things at live streaming. Um, trying to bring in new new ideas and new technologies that might not be used, and and always trying to find the best cameras that we can port around, or um, the the newest things that we can do on the website that'll make people interested in it. And of course, there's always the social media aspect. So um, I'm kind of in between the generations that uh, started, you know, doing that. So now I'm trying to I'm trying to catch up with all the with all the new technologies that all the things that I learned in college, of course, are way way outdated. So. It's a matter of uh, keeping up with learning new things and always looking for the, the best equipment and the best uh, ways of using social media and, um, uh, and online media. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, what's left unsaid here is I, I think, you know, the biggest challenge is, is money, you know, mm -hmm. the, in finding, you know, the, the, the money and in, in, in the, the model, you know, to, uh, to produce enough money to keep the, the site going and, and expanding it and, and buying equipment and, and, and hiring more people. It's a constant, and, and Malia is, 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 is a wonder, you know, how much time and, and success she has at, at finding, finding the money necessary to keep an operation like this going. It's, it's, it's very demanding and very difficult. And to stay independent mm -hmm. too, I guess. Right, just to be able to stay independent and, you know, you always have that challenge when you take either, you either have investors or you have advertisers or um, grants or whatever, but hopefully we can get the support from enough places and the, the right people to be able to not have people trying to influence our news. And I can say in, in all the years we've had Hawaii Reporter, which is now more than 10 years, we've been very lucky where we've never had an advertiser try to to push them us around or an investor try to push us around and it, it's been great because we might have other people outside trying to push us around <laughs> but not uh, but not um, the people that have really that really care and, and sponsor the website through their advertising or through their you know donations and things like that mm -hmm. and there are uh, fewer and fewer investigative reporters why do you think some media have decided to stop investigating do you think it's because of money because of time because of the audience interest it's a hard question to answer because I, I, I think that you know it's it, it, it's a it's an area that that is sort of guaranteed to draw interest from the public you know and <clears throat> I, I, I guess the answer would be money it's it's it, it can be time consuming and, and it can be expensive and 
there are certain legal risks in, in, involved in it, um, which can be costly. But you know, if you if you know what you're doing and, and you're careful and you and you uh, and you do the, the, the research and, and do what's necessary to, to support and back up the story, then the, then legal risks really shouldn't m much enter into it. But so, you know, I, I just I, I don't understand. You know why why uh, there there are certainly a, the, the, the newspaper, the daily newspaper here has, I think, one uh, full-time investigative reporter who doesn't really produce much on a, certainly not on a daily basis, um, and, and one TV station here that has, does, does good in investigative work. Um, but other than that, you know, that's, that's pretty much it, other than, 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 uh, than Hawaii Reporter. Mm -hmm. Do you have? Well, I guess that I think um, for me, I, it's just something that I think needs to be done and the resources need to be put into it if you care about the community you live in. And, um, you know, I'm sure um, that editors do. But a lot of times maybe they don't want to be in controversial or dig into things that might offend someone because it might hurt ad revenue or mm -hmm. um, hurt, it, you know, access, as I said in the beginning. And, I think that that is one of the main reasons that we don't see more investigative reporting, plus just committing the resources. A lot of times, um, the news as the newsrooms shrink, um, they're sending people out just to cover, say, a half-hour newscast, just to get enough uh, coverage for that day of stories where they don't let them actually spend the time they might need to do two or three days or a week to mm -hmm. actually get a really good investigative news, news piece that'll air. So. Um, as Jim mentioned, there is a really good uh, news team now developing on one of our stations, but uh, the other stations have a ways to go to catch up. Mm -hmm. You deal with very controversial stories and you uh, sometimes commit yourself. Uh, is there any law or any, I don't know, association which uh, can protect you from being sued or threatened? If there is, I'd, I'd like to know about it. <laughs> We're pretty much on, on our own. I mean, there are certainly uh, Professional associations that that can give you advice and and uh, but uh, as far as uh, as in guidance on you know on, on on how similar work has been done in the past and you know <clears throat> uh, pitfalls to it to avoid but uh, it's it's pretty much you're on your on your own we we uh, we, uh, we we're we're responsible for our for our work and and we don't really have anybody backing us up it's 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 just us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in the bigger picture, the, there's First Amendment. There's the First Amendment Center and some other journalism groups that are supposed to really help you. But really, when it comes down to it, you just have to stand by your work and make sure that your work is good enough so that if you do go to court, um, you're able to defend your work. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, can you use hidden camera re re recording, taping? Are you allowed to do that? Every state has different laws. What about Hawaii? Hawaii? Yeah, Hawaii has a one-party consent when it comes to tape recording someone, so or recording someone on the phone. So, um, so that's allowed here, where I could, and and that's what a lot of journalists use just to make sure that they get things accurate, and that later on the person can't say they didn't say that. They want to be able to quote them exactly. So we're able to use um, recording devices for that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's there's legal limitations. I mean, you can't. You can't bug a room. You know, you can't tape record a, a conversation uh, that that two other people that you're not part of that other people are having. That's illegal. You can't do that. So there there are there are limitations in you know in, in things you have to watch out for, public private pri public property versus private property that that sort of thing. But you know, the, so you have to be be careful about things like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you seem so passionate by your work. What are the main motivations? Um, which bring you to work? I mean, I think for me, um, I just think that there's so many stories to be told in Hawaii that aren't being told. And there's a lot of accountability issues here where government officials act in a certain manner and may not be the best for the public, but um, there's not a lot of people with the access to them to be able to ask the questions that we do. And sometimes at press conferences, you know, there's only two people or three people there, um, and maybe at the most, maybe six media organizations there. And um, we're able to get in there and really ask the questions that the public wants us to ask. You know, we get the public writing to us on in emails or on Facebook or you know, calling us up and saying, "Hey, why don't you ask about this?" And we actually get into the room to get and you know, get our microphones in front of these people and get to and get the cameras on them and actually put them on the spot mm -hmm. and ask them what the public wants them to know. And so I think that's what keeps me going is that um, we've created this uh, Hawaii reporter 
it has, has great access to people all over town in all ranks of uh, power, and we're able to really ask them the questions that the public wants to know. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's just, a, it's a wonderful line of work. I mean, it's, you know, if you get to, to stick your nose into, into all kinds of things and find out something new every day. And, and, and I, I, I sometimes compared the, the, this kind of work we do to sort of social auditing. <clears throat> Let's just take a look at, you know, a part of society and see how it works and, and is, is it working the way it's supposed to. And, 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 it's it's just all kinds of things you can look. I, I became at one point in my life, you know, fairly knowledgeable about about the trucking industry, you know, and I, you know, it's it's a it's a really obscure, you know, little section of, of society, but it's really interesting. And there's all kinds of, of fascinating things that you know go on in the trucking industry. I became, you know, kind of an expert on, on Japanese organized crime, you know, at one point in my life, and another, you know, rather obscure, you know, part of society, but very interesting. And that's the that's the the, the wonderful part of about the, uh, the the work that we do is you, know, you just you get to find out, you know, about all you get to you know, interview governors and senators and, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and mafia bosses and, you know, and, and from the high and the low. It's, 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 it's fun and it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Very diverse. Yeah. Um, what advices will you give to students who, wants, uh, who want to become journalists but also uh, investigative reporters? You know, it's it's difficult to give advice to students these days, you know, because the market is changing and, and the, the, the job market is, is appears to be you know kind of uh, kind of getting smaller but on the other hand you know maybe it's getting larger it, it's it I, I think you have to be have a well-rounded education I, I certainly think that you know that that language skills you know that foreign language skills are, are very valuable computer skills are, are pretty much of a, of a must now um, but it's and you have to you have to just be interested in things and be curious and don't be you know afraid to ask stupid questions because or ignorant questions because that's that's what we do for a living you know the, and so it's the, I, I don't really know what 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 more to say at this point. Malia may mm -hmm. have more to say. And about we have that. 15 minutes more. 15, 15 okay. Seconds, sorry. Um, basically, I think courage um, and also um, curiosity are two of the things that you have to have as journalists and, and also the ability to learn new technologies and, and so on. So um, I think definitely anybody that's going into journalism has to be have the courage to ask the right questions and the curiosity to, to ask them and, and, and also to just not be afraid to ask the questions that somebody else might say is dumb because out there I'm sure people, there's people that, that can learn from what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. And um, my stay in Hawaii was very great to see how journalists work. So thank you so much, Melia. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we had um, you on today, Juliet. And uh, we look forward to seeing you become very famous when you're back in France. I try. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we hope you come back to America, too. Yes, me too. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. This has been News Behind the News. Aloha. <laughs>